hello once again. In this video, we're going to be actually starting to do some calculations, which I bet you're excited for. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at different ways of getting some summary statistics that are concerning with a single variable at a time. So things like means, standard deviations, all that good stuff. Uh, so you'll remember last time we loaded in a data set. We used a, we're using a stated data set that comes from the Wooldridge textbook uh, called wage1.dta. We loaded in with, a, with the foreign package, which we need in order to load in Stata files. Uh, so let's, before we get started, let's do what everybody should do all the time when you're working with a data set and look at it. We're going to actually look at the data. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to say head, show me the head of this data set. And this will show me the first six rows and it'll show me sort of what the data looks like. So if I look through there, uh, you can see that we have the wage variable, which appears to be a continuous variable. We have uh, things, we have some binary variables like females, either one or zero. Uh, married is one or zero. We have some things like years of education, years of experience, years of job tenure, all that good stuff. Uh, we can also, of course, click on this to look at the entire thing directly, which you might not want to do if it's a huge data set because it could take some time to load, but this one's relatively small, so we're good to go. Okay, so we've got our data set loaded in. Let's look at some summary statistics for the wage variable. We're going to do some basic stuff. Uh, so we're, of course, the most basic thing that we can do, we're going to calculate the mean. Uh, now, this video, there's going to be a number of new uh, functions that you're going to need to learn, but a lot of them have pretty intuitive names, so you'll be able to remember them pretty easily. So we'll start, of course, with taking the mean. Guess what function that name has, or name how that function has. Of course, it's just mean. So I want to take the mean. All I got to do is feed in the variable that I want to take the mean of. So of course, I want the wage variable. That's going to come from the wage one data set. Select wage with the dollar sign. Look at all the different variables I could be doing, but I'm doing wage. I do that, and that will give me the, the, the average wage, which is 5.896. Of course, what's a good uh, mean without a good standard deviation? So we're going to get the standard deviation of wage as well. So that one, all we got to do, SD of the same thing. The standard deviation of wage right there from the wage one data set, uh, of course, 3.693. Uh, now, there are a lot of different functions that we could do. We could do, be doing median, we could be doing different percentiles, lots of different, everything that you can imagine we could be doing here. Uh, but we're not going to go through every single one of them. If you, if you need something like that, you know, Google whatever the function is that you're interested in, and Google will repeat back to you what, your, what the, the function title is, and you can do the exact same thing that you did here with mean and standard deviation. But maybe we don't want to do one, one thing at a time. Maybe we want a nice summary statistics table that reports several different statistics of interest to us at once. Uh, so there are a couple different ways to do this. One, of course, is the basic summary statistics function in R, which, as you might guess, has the name summary. So we're going to get summary statistics table. So all we got to do is summary of this variable that we have. If we do this, it's going to give us the minimum. It's going to give us the maximum. It's going to give us the mean. It's also going to give us the three, the uh, quartile, so the 25th percentile, the first quartile, the median, the 50, uh, 50 percentile, the second quartile, and the 75th percentile, the third quartile, right there. Now, these are not the standard kind of summary statistics that uh, economists expect. Usually, we expect to see a couple of things that we don't see here. So, for example, the number of observations that we might uh, have, we have of this of this variable, we definitely want a report on a summary statistic table, and the standard deviation we typically would want to report on a summary statistics table. Uh, so I'm going to introduce another package that we need to download in a library called the Stargazer package. So I'm going to load that in library Stargazer. Uh, you'll notice that I include all of my library commands up here at the top of the code. Uh, that's not necessary, but it is my preference at least, and that is something that I typically see to have them all up here together. It sort of reminds you what's coming up in the code ahead, uh, and it ensures that you don't have to reload the package multiple times if you're rerunning a section of code. So I'm going to load in Stargazer. Now what Stargazer does is it does a couple things for us. First of all, those things that I said that we wanted in the summary statistics table that we didn't have, it's going to have those by default. And it's very flexible, so we can add in other kinds of summary statistics very easily. The other nice thing that it does is that it makes it look a lot nicer. It just makes a nicer looking table than we have right here. Thirdly, it has a very easy option for reading the table out to a file so then we can open it up and copy it into, say, Word in a way that looks very nice. So the, the trade-off here is that it's slightly more difficult to use in that 
we need to feed it a data frame. We can't feed it a variable like we've been doing before. If I, if I feed it a variable like this, if I say stargazer with wage one dollar sign wage, it's going to give me this. It's going to read out every single value of the variable. We don't want that. Okay? It needs a data frame to go in. So how can we feed it a data frame? Well, basically we want to get a data frame that only has the wage variable in it. right? And we already know how to do that because we already know how to pick a single variable out of a data frame right? with the subset command. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use subset. I'm going to say subset of the wage one data set, comma. Uh, which rows do I want? I want all the rows. And which, which uh, variables do I want? Oh, I want select equal to wage. Give me the wage variable. So this right here will give me back a data frame that just has the wage variable in it. So if I stick this into Stargazer, that's what it needs to be. Okay, I need to feed it in the data frame, which I can do with subset. Now, one other thing that we need to do with Stargazer, we need to tell it what kind of table we want. Now, if we want to read it just out to the console and look at it, typically what we want is the text table, right? Because we want it to read out just in text format so that we can read it. So I'm going to say type equals text. If I run that, boom, isn't that nice? That looks very nice, right? So it tells us, first of all, what variable we're working with. It tells us the number of observations. It tells us the mean, the standard deviation, the min, and the max. This is what is expected in a typical economics summary statistics table. If you want other stuff in there, the, if you look in the Stargazer help file with help Stargazer, it will show you a lot more as well. The other nice thing about Stargazer is that it's, it's very flexible. You can add in more than one variable at once very easily, right? Um, you know, again, we're only working with one variable at a time, but let's say we want to get the single variable summary statistics for several different variables. Easy. I just got to feed it a bigger data set with more variables in it. So I'm going to take this. Instead of just selecting the wage, all I got to do to get more variables in there is just tell it to subset more variables. So I don't just want wage. I want also experience and tenure. If I do that, boom, right there. It gives me all three variables in a nice summary statistics table. Now, I mentioned that you could also read this out to a file that you can say copy into a Word document and turn in with your homework, right? So let's do that too. Uh, so we're gonna do that exact same thing. Uh, and we are going to, uh, this time let's say we only want it for women, okay? So all we gotta do is just feed Stargazer just the women, which we can already do with our subset command. How do we use subset to just pick the women? Well, we just tell it what rows we want. I only want female equal to one. Right. So now this subset command in the middle here, that will give me back a data frame because subset gives me a data frame. It will give me just the women because I said female equals one. And it will give me just the wage variable because I said uh, pick the wage. OK, now uh, I'm going to read this file out. Typically, when you're reading out with with Stargazer, you want you don't want a text file. You want an HTML file so you can open it up in your browser and then copy it into Word. Uh, and then I want to read it out. I want to say out, right? I'm going to tell it where, where I want it to read the file out to. So I'm going to say uh, womenstats.html, okay? I'm going to run this. It's going to read it out to the working directory. Let me check my working directory real quick. Uh, so let's go ahead and set the working directory where I want it to be. Oh, that's where I want it to be, perfect. So if I run this, Okay, it'll feed out a bunch of junk to the, to, the, to the screen, but I don't care about that. It will give me this HTML file right here, which I can open up, and I can copy this into Word right there. And it copies in as a table. You can mess around with it there, clean it up, do whatever you want, okay? Uh, so, two last things that we're gonna do. One, everything that we've done so far with summary statistics has been things that you would do on continuous variables, right? Like with wage. We've taken the mean, we've taken the standard deviation. What if you have a variable that takes levels instead? So for example, education, uh, it's the number of years of education that you have, uh, which roughly maps onto, you know, do you have a high school degree, do you have a college degree, etc. Let's say I want to look at the full distribution of this. I can do this with the table command. So if I say I want to look at, look at all the levels of education, I want to say table. Give me a table of the values. Oops for the uh, education variable from the wage one data set. If I do this, it will give me all the values. So for example, now I can see that there are two people with zero years of education. Uh, there are three people with four years of education. There are 198 people with exactly 12 years of education and so on. 
right? So uh, this is very useful. I use table all the time if I'm saying trying to look at the different kinds of levels that things take or looking at the general distribution. It's very useful. Of course, you wouldn't use it for a variable like wage because there's way too many different values there. The final thing that I'm going to talk about for single variable summary statistics is a t-test of the mean, right? So it's not uncommon that you might want to do a test like, say, uh, test if, this, if the mean of this variable is equal to 6, right? You would do that with a t-test. Now guess what the, the command name for t-test is? It's t.test. So we're going to do a t-test uh, checking the mean of a variable, okay? So uh, let's say we want to look, we, wanna we, 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 we know that the mean of the wage variable is 5.89. Maybe I think, well, I wonder if that's statistically different from 6, right? So let's do that test. So the t-test command uh, will take whatever you feed it and it will check it against 0, not against 6, okay? So if I want to test if the mean is equal to 6, all I got to do is say, okay, take the wage 1, that wage. You know, if I just put this in by itself, it would test if the mean was equal to zero, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But I want to test if it's equal to six. So instead, what I should do is take this, subtract six from it, and then that will check it against zero. And that's the same as testing if the mean is equal to six. So if I run this, uh, it will give me lots of information. Uh, it will give me uh, the uh, uh, t-statistic of that test. It'll give me the degrees of freedom. It'll give me the p-value, which I can see is very, very high. It's above uh, it's, it's 0.5, so I can say that I cannot say that the mean of the wage is different from 6, right? The null here is that it's equal to 6. The alternative is that it's not equal to 6, which, by the way, it tells me what the alternative is there, right? So is that it's nice if you're still working out the, the null and alternative hypotheses. Uh, and so I can't reject the null. I can't reject that this term right here is 0, which means I can't reject that the mean of wage is 6. It also gives me the 95% confidence interval for the mean, which is nice. Um, uh, which is everything that we need. All right, that's it. So what we've gone over is how to get some summary statistics for single variables. We talked about how to get the mean, the standard deviation. We talked about how to get some summary statistics tables, both with the summary statistics or the summary command in, in regular R, which shows us the max, the min, the quartiles, and the mean. Uh, we talked about Stargazer, which is a more flexible uh, way of getting summary statistics tables, which shows us the number of observations, the mean, standard deviation, min, and max. We also showed how to get uh, how to use subsetting. Uh, uh, so with with that, so we all we showed how to do subsets of the way of the wage one data set using subset and feed that into Stargazer, and that will give us back uh, all just the variables that we want, just the observations that we want. If we wanted to, of course, use subsetting uh, with the other things like mean, that would also work, which we could do with indexing or with subset. We also talked about how to get a distribution of a a, a, a discrete variable or a categorical variable with table which will show all the different values and how many observations have each value. And finally, we showed how to do a one sample t-test, testing the mean of a variable against some value. All right, that's it. I uh, hope you find this useful. I'd recommend downloading this data set. It's available online. You can use the code in here just to download it. Uh, and checking this out, try to look at some summary statistics maybe for some other variables, right? Do a table on one of the other variables. Just once you get used to this, this is the useful kind of stuff that you want to do because you want to get to know your data before you actually do anything with it. It's a bad idea to run something like a regression if you don't know what your data sort of looks like in general. Because you might get it wrong, you might uh, treat the, very, the data in a, in a way that it's not meant to be treated. Okay, that's it. See you next time.